One way to keep young is to keep active. And when we were kids, we were tend to be very active. I don't know about you, but when I was very young, I was always running around and going out and riding my bike and doing all sorts of different things that burnt up lots of energy and kept me active all the time. But of course, as we get older, we become more sedentary. We tend to take sit-down jobs these days, and we travel everywhere by car. So we don't really get a lot of exercise when we're moving from one place to the other. Now, some people join a gym and work out, but unfortunately, most people don't, and this is a big mistake. Because an extra hundred and fifty minutes of moderate exercise a week could extend your life by an extra three point four years, and even doing seventy-five minutes a week, you know, I mean, that's just over ten minutes a day, could earn you another one point eight years, and those are pretty good reasons to exercise. And these statistics are courtesy of PLOS Medicine. And of course, the main benefits of exercise are to your heart, because rigorous exercise will allow the left ventricle of your heart to enlarge, just like it would with any other muscle. And you'll be able to move more blood around the body with each pump and deliver more nutrients and more oxygen to your muscles and tissues. And of course, that means that your body cells can repair themselves just that much quicker. Your heart won't have to work as hard, and your resting heart rate will be lower, as will your blood pressure, and all that will reduce your risk of a stroke or a heart attack. So it's more than just looking; it is actually keeping your whole body much younger. And of course, keeping your muscles in condition means that they won't deteriorate, and you'll be able to stay more mobile. And this can help ward off arthritis and other age-related complaints. So again, it's keeping your body young. It'll also keep your weight down. Now, in the U.S., more than two-thirds—that's sixty-eight point eight percent of adults—are considered to be overweight. Or obese, and more than one third—that's thirty-five point seven percent of adults—are considered to be obese. More than one in twenty, that's six point three percent, have extreme obesity, and almost three out of four men, or seventy-four percent, are considered to be overweight or obese. And I'm sure these figures are similar in most other Western countries. And you know that really. Tells a story about the way that most people live their lives. They simply don't exercise enough, and when you're not burning off the calories to、uh, move around, then your body lays that down as fat. And of course, there are all the other health implications that come along with that. And of course, fat people don't look particularly youthful. And according to the Alzheimer's Society. Regular exercise can significantly reduce the risk of developing dementia by about thirty percent, and for Alzheimer's disease specifically, the risk was reduced by forty-five percent. And these are very good reasons to exercise, because after all, Alzheimer's is a disease generally considered of the elderly. So, what sort of exercise should you do to keep active and keep young? Well, it doesn't have to be too strenuous. You know, just going for a run, a jog, or a brisk walk every day, or doing some other type of exercise that leaves you slightly out of breath, can be beneficial, especially if you start doing it during your youth or in your middle years. You could also join a gym or hire a personal trainer or a personal fitness instructor or a coach to devise an exercise program for you. But no matter how you do it, the earlier you start, the younger you'll stay. In this video, I want to talk about sleep, which is nature's healer and rejuvenator. 
And getting a good night's sleep is important because it helps your body in a number of different ways. First and foremost, getting enough sleep makes you look healthier and more attractive. And that's according to a 2010 study published in the British Medical Journal. And researchers photographed 23 people after a period of sleep deprivation and after a normal night's sleep of about eight hours. And the photos were shown to 65 people who rated each photo based on health, attractiveness and tiredness. And the sleep-deprived group scored lower in all three categories. And of course... When you get a decent night's sleep, you'll live longer too. Because regularly sleeping less than you should is associated with a shorter lifespan, although it's not clear whether little sleep is the cause or an effect of other illnesses. And studies have found people who routinely sleep for fewer than six hours a night have a higher risk of dying sooner than people of a similar age who sleep for seven or eight hours a night. And this is according to the website bodyandsoul.com.au. And of course, sleep heals you from the inside out. When you sleep, your brain triggers the release of hormones that encourage tissue growth. And this can help you recover from injuries such as cuts or even sore muscles from your last workout. And during sleep, you make more white blood cells that attack viruses and bacteria. And that's why sleep is often called nature's healer, because when you're asleep, you're getting more white blood cells and you uh, concentrate your energy on beating any infection that you might be suffering from. And in one study, people who slept for at least eight hours a night were three times less likely to come down with a cold than those who got seven hours or less. And that's according to the good people at webmd.com. And your blood pressure dips as you sleep. And this may give your heart a break. You know, it might allow you to rest your heart slightly so it's not having to pump round quite so much and there may be other heart health benefits too so how much sleep is enough well according to the mayo clinic for most adults between seven and nine hours is sufficient and older adults need about the same amount of sleep as younger adults so you're looking at uh, the sort of the higher end of that scale there but As you get older, your sleeping patterns might change, though, and older adults tend to sleep more lightly and for shorter time spans than do younger adults, although the amount of sleep probably remains the same. So the more you sleep, the more your body rejuvenates, the healthier you'll be, and the younger you'll look. It's no secret that good health equals youthful, both in youthful appearance, in youthful mobility, and in a youthful attitude as well. Because after all, if you're not having to concentrate on getting better, if you're not in poor health, then you're going to have a much more positive outlook on life. So it's important that you see your doctor for regular health checkups as you get older. This helps to prevent problems developing or from worsening. And if you have a family history of certain diseases or ailments, then a regular health check is essential. And I don't just mean if your parents or your grandparents had health problems. You also want to look at your wider family. If your siblings start to come down with some sort of health problem, there's a good chance that you might have it too. So you need to get yourself checked out. And the same goes for a bit further afield, you know, 
uncles, aunts, cousins, etc. Any blood relative that has some sort of ailment or some sort of disease which could be inherited means there's a good chance that you might have it too, so you do need to get yourself checked out under those circumstances. So what sort of things should you get your doctor to check for and what sort of questions should you ask and what sort of things should you ask about when you have a checkup? Well, I suppose perhaps the most important thing is cancer screening because if you treat cancer early enough, then you can literally save your life. So we're talking things like breast cancer, cervical cancer, prostate cancer, colon cancer, and lung cancer, particularly if you're a smoker or if you have smoked in the past. You want to make sure that uh, there's nothing untoward going on there. You also want to get your doctor to check your cholesterol. And this is particularly important if you're over 40, because then cholesterol can start to build up. You also want to have regular checks of your blood pressure because that can be an indicator of poor heart health. So you want to get that checked out. You also want to get checked out for HIV or AIDS if you're in a high risk group. So if you're gay or if you've had a blood transfusion in the past or if you are or have been an intravenous drug user and have shared needles, then you want to make sure that you regularly get checked out to make sure you're not developing HIV or full-blown AIDS. You also want to have a blood test to look for viruses in case you're suffering from any other type of viruses. And particularly, you want to have your doctor check out if you're suffering from any what's known as low-level viruses. Now, these are viruses that don't generally manifest themselves with any particular symptoms, but they can just simply make you feel off-colour all the time and uh, make you perhaps more susceptible to getting colds and sore throats and that sort of thing. And quite often, if you don't have a lot of energy, if you're feeling sort of generally blah all the time, it may well be that you're suffering from a low-level virus and you want to get that checked out. You should also see your dentist regularly. Bad teeth can be very aging, and extractions can cause hollow cheeks, which can put years on your appearance. Also, good oral health can lead to good general health because your body isn't having to fight oral infections. And your dentist can also look for signs of mouth cancer and can detect it early. So you should go and see your dentist at least once a year, preferably twice a year, just for a regular checkup. You should also keep up to date with any vaccinations and inoculations. And this is particularly important if you do a lot of travelling. If you go to countries where certain diseases are endemic, but they're not native to the country where you live, then obviously that puts you at a much higher risk of contracting those infections. So if you're going to any country outside the immediate area where you live, then you should go and see a doctor ahead of time to make sure that you have all the uh, jabs that you need to keep you healthy. And you should also, during the course of having your checkup, review any existing health problems and note any changes. You know, have you noticed any body changes, including lumps or skin changes? Are you having pain, dizziness, fatigue, problems with urine or stool or menstrual cycle changes? Have your eating habits changed? Are you experiencing depression, anxiety, trauma, distress or sleeping problems? All these could be uh, an indicator of something more serious going on. So you do need to discuss this with your doctor during your checkup. And if problems are caught and solved early enough, not only will you live a longer, healthier life, but you'll have a better quality of life too.